having come out here tonight. It's uh, tremendous to see so many people here at such an early hour, and I'm very grateful for it. We, the people of Ireland today, live in a country which looks uncertain, facing as we are a long road of austerity. It is at times like this that one can see clear links with the past. Did the women and men of 1916 not see hardship before them? Did those valiant heroes who fought a bitter struggle against the largest empire the world had ever seen not see hardship before them? Did those who continued that fight to see Ireland stand among the nations of, of the free world not see hardship before them? Now we live in equally uncertain times. We see Europe stripping us of our freedom to the more recent actions whereby China has invaded our shores. Yet these are indeed bad times. Just look at what China has left in her way all across Africa, and one need have no illusions about China's true aims. However, when I reflect upon what all our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents have come true, I take heart. When one observes that they came through two, two world wars, a long bitter fight for independence, which did not end with 1923, but had to be fought again during an economic war, to eventually come to have the freedom that we enjoyed in our own era. When I reflect on all these hardships that our own forefathers successfully came through, I take heart and know that we likewise will also succeed. It is now at this time that I will invite the proclamation to be read and we have Marion Lee to read this for us and we should all take heart from these words mentioning as they are teams of equality and the foundation upon which our Republican was set up. I invite Marion to come forward. government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself. She now seizes that moment and, supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying on the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the Irish people to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state and we pledge the lives and our lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing 
all the children of the nation equally and oblivious to the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God whose blessing we invoke upon our arms and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour the Irish nation must by its valour and discipline and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDiarmada, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kiant, James Connolly, Joseph Crumpet. Thank you, Marion, for that very eloquent reading of such an important document. I now invite a local poet, Marion Curtin, to step forward and to read for her her poem. I have two poems for you this morning. I wrote one last year. Easter 1916-2012 Their Lives, Our Freedom 96 years ago on that morning in the month of May 1916 they gave their lives for me and mine so we would be free I often wonder what did they feel and the last thing they saw was their thoughts on their beloved families and the last sight they would ever see was it the skies above the beautiful island of Ireland before they saw the wonderful face of their God? As the bullet rang out to end their lives so we would be free, free to think, to see, to do all we wanted to do, may the soil of their beloved Ireland lay gently on them. May we always sing their praises, for they gave us the most precious gift they had, their lives, that gave us our freedom. May they rest in peace. And this poem is called Island Today and it's done in a dream. As I lay my head on my pillow with a big eider down at my feet, lying there cosy and warm, hoping to sleep until morn. And as I lay there in slumber, a dream appeared in my head. I was somewhere in Dublin. I was outside Kilmainham Jail instead. I turned to the person beside me. He had a newspaper in his hand. I glanced at the date on the paper. It was dated May the 12th, 1916. The headline on the paper gave the names of the men executed for Ireland. The names were as followed. P. H. Pierce, Thomas MacDonough, Thomas J. Clark, May the 3rd, 1916. Willie Pierce, Joseph Plunkett, Edward Daly and Michael Hanrahan, May the 4th, 1916. John McBride, May the 5th, 1916. Cornelius Combs, Corbett, Eamon Kent, Michael Mallon and Sean Houston, May the 8th, 1916. Thomas Kent, May the 9th, 1916. James Conley and Sean McDiarmida, May the 12th, 1916. Is the beauty in dying, or is the victory in death? Then I saw a boy on the corner, reading a sheet in his hand, and the first two lines I was glancing were familiar in my mind. It read, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of our dead generations. In my unconscious mind, it was the words of our proclamation. I awoke, and then I thought, I was not born, I did not live, back in 1916 those brave women and men, P. 
Get me my freedom of speech, my right to say what I want for my island today. Thank you very much, Marion, for those two excellent poems. I now call upon Councillor Jim O'Shea, who will be representing uh, all elected representatives of Tipperary, to present a reach to Tim Maher, PC. And Tim Maher will then lay the reach. ask uh, Arthur Griffin, well known to all of us and a very passionate speaker and we're all looking forward now to the address he will now uh, give us on this important day. So I invite uh, Arthur Griffin to step forward. And then I thought I yet might see our fetters rent in twain in Ireland, land of province, be a nation once again. Thomas Davis. You're very welcome here today to Temple Moor. Uh, on my behalf, on behalf of the membership of Fianna Fáil and Open Fianna Fáil in the The title of today's address is Proclamation of a Republic, State of Our Republic, and Future for the Republican Party. And the basic theme is idealism. And that common thread that will run throughout the comparison between the cynicism that existed immediately before the 1916 Rising, which was eradicated by the idealistic self-sacrifice of those who died, the idealism which this country 